Welcome to the Bring Me to Life podcast. It's time to wake up and shine on. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Bring Me to Life podcast. (laughs) CeeLo can't keep me from laughing right now because he keeps breathing really hard into the microphone because he's really excited to talk about time and quantum healing and the quantum realms because a couple of us fell into a deep portal about the quantum phenomenon that is happening right now yeah yesterday during the event uh i, I heard word of uh quantum entanglement or whatever and, uh, that got you really going um yeah and i think it's fascinating all very fascinating did you mean to kick me did i say something wrong i didn't kick you i moved my chair oh i think yeah <laughs> um, i was like oh no i'm saying something wrong uh but no. quantum like quantum physics quantum mechanics is quite interesting maybe you felt me in a different realm yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> Go ahead. Time lag or something, you know? But um, we've watched quite a lot of shows and stuff that has dealt with time, time travel, mu- multiverse, you know, multiple yeah. uh, realities, mm-hmm. um, you know? Things like Loki and mm, Loki Doctor Strange and yeah. all of those kinds of things. But... Um, in a different um, point of view, I think that the uh, the quantum phenomenon, it's interesting now to just hear like random folks talking about quantum anything. Right. Like <laughs> um, school teachers. Yeah. On like <laughs> a, a science level and like day to day conversation. Um, I remember a few years ago when I got really into quantum healing and Dolores Cannon and the understanding mm-hmm. of, you know, altering our realities in that kind of thing and i've been really getting um into the mind valley practices and they do a lot of different like quantum jumps and just like um for some people i feel like they still categorize it in this like woo sense that it's just this like thing that people who meditate think they're going into this like special realm but like there is some science to it um we we basically already exist in a quantum reality um because the quantum realm, it's really, it's the discussion around subatomic particles and the, the way that they build all the blocks of matter that make up everything that we're experiencing. Yeah. So from, okay, I'm I'm going to ask, or I'm going to kind of describe what I think you're saying. Okay. Um, so I'm all matter gonna... is made up of atoms and it looks physical to us and it feels physical to us and... Um, like this table is very hard and I can't put my hand through it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in actuality, atoms are just mostly space and like our bodies are mostly space. Uh, all the material items around us, this entire physical world is made up of atoms, which are like 99.9% space. It's like, how am I standing on top of this right now? It's crazy. Yeah. Right? Is that what you were kind of like describing? Um, sort of. I'm not going to claim to be a, a scientist here. <laughs> I yeah. do it from more of a um like spiritual and personal uh perspective, but yeah, like the things that we are experiencing, they're made of atoms and um generally like we create the reality that we're in by witnessing it by witnessing it as the structures that we relate to like an object like we know that we're speaking into a microphone and we've created this image of what that microphone looks like um just like there's those different scientific practices of like all right some people can really visualize an apple in their mind they see the apple they can see the shape it is they can see the contour of it they know it's got like this like not flat but like sort of round texture to it they can see you know the glare from the light of the apple Um, maybe they associate apples with mostly red um or maybe someone has a favorite kind of apple maybe their favorite kind is green so when you say apple green yeah some people see green but we're we're creating that reality in our mind by how we're witnessing it now, some people are like, well, you, you know, you're not creating the fact that, you know, something exists in, in some realm. Like, um, I don't know what, um, 
maybe some of my friends' homes look like. Maybe I've never been to their house. And they're like talking about this experience they had. And we create a version of what we think they're talking about when they're sharing a story in our minds. Um, but it might not actually be, you know, what they experience. Um, that being said, we each have our own quantum experience of what our realities are like. So if I share a story with you about um, my childhood, you weren't there to witness it. So you can only build, you know, your reality's perspective of what that experience was by me explaining it to you. Mm -hmm. um, and I like to storytell, so I will explain things in very full detail. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Um, in hopes that somebody can visualize it with me because that's how my mind works. Um, that being said, we also perceive things from, you know, our childhoods, our pasts, or even our futures um, by putting these experiences in our mind in a way that we can, you know, recall them or perceive them. And you talked about in one of our last episodes about time and how you thought it wasn't linear. Do you mm -hmm. want to talk about that a little bit before I keep going down this rabbit hole? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I was mentioning, uh, I don't believe personally that time is a linear thing. Um, and there are many reasons for why I believe that, but I can meditate and I can go back to experiences of, you know, my past and kind of like relive them um, and kind of feel like that's almost like a, a form of time traveling is like going back into that past, you know, and kind of reliving it and feeling, feeling all of that again. Um, but there's this, um, there's this thing called the astral, uh, I think it's like the astral cloud or the Akashic records. The Akashic records, that's what I call it, yeah. And that is a place of uh, like a, a vibratory frequency that you can access. And held within there is is like a bunch of data, basically. And the data is dreams and, and hopes and goals of the people and the thoughts and uh, all those things. So being able to go to the Kashuk records, you get access to this record of all these things that have happened. You can go back to that point in time, that point in space time. Um, through different meditative practices, through the dream realms and things like that. Yeah, you, you can. And that's, um, I think that's where the, the concept of quantum healing really kind of comes into play and why I, got interested in it. So um, I think if you go more into the science of the understanding of the quantum realm and going back to the, the concept that everything is made of subatomic particles, um, you were talking about how time isn't linear. So things can be all happening at once. I think we were talking and referencing like we were recording something on like a new moon, but we'll be releasing it later mm -hmm. and how you can capture the energy yeah. of that experience yeah. and send it out to people. Mm -hmm. People can go back and listen to it and they have like the energy of that. Yeah. And I think what I wanted to talk about is why um, I kind of believe in th this um, understanding of it because quantum healing became this thing. If you hear a noise, our air conditioner just <laughs> came on. Sula made a face. I don't know if you can actually <laughs> hear it. Um, but anyway, I'm going to keep going on my spiel. So why I think this is an important thing to understand as a creative is you can change your um, perspective or your way of thinking around whatever it is that you may be working through, whether it's a trauma or a block, a writer's block. Um, you feel like you just aren't creative that day or um, you're having a hard time forgiving yourself or a person, place, or thing for something that happened. And it's uh, interesting to me because I personally had a lot of different um, – hard times growing up, things that really could have taken me off my path and my focus as a creative, as an artist, as a speaker. And there's different moments in my life that I can remember thinking I should be much more upset than I am right now, or I should, you know, you know, I could be in a much different place, but I felt this sense of protection, um, healing. Uh, I often will talk about it as angels and different energy forms. And as we grow to understand these um, kind of quantum understandings in a way, 
Um, I feel like, yes, there are these like spiritual energies that have protected me, but it's also things that I've learned in my future self and been able to send back. Um, there's oftentimes like the, Harry Potter. I was waiting for you to bring up Harry <laughs> Potter. Yes. Where he thinks it's his dad, mm-hmm. but it's actually him. All along. Um, what one was that? The I think prisoner it, as a, of Azkaban. Yeah. He's like trying to protect um, the guy and he like sends his own Patronus and thinks it's his dad. And I, I can relate to that because there's a lot of times I'll do meditations and they'll be like, let's hear a previous trauma. And they'll be like, visualize a time in your life that really, you know, sticks out to you as a painful moment. And, Um, though I do remember, you know, having a sense of understanding, like there are times that I've reflected on it and been like, wow, I was in a lot of physical pain or emotional pain, or I was experiencing and witnessing the death of a loved one. And I'll relive that through a grief process. But I do feel that I'm able to send some sort of energy back to little me and say, like, you're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Like some days are rough as shit (laughs) but there's other days where it's like i can tell that me here in the now is doing my best to set the previous me up for success does that mean that there weren't times that i completely ignored my intuition and i'm healed of everything no because it's going to take me years to reflect on every and even remember because there's a lot of stuff i've locked away um everything that maybe is like holding a energetic spot in my body. But I think that that's where um, the understanding of we're all walking each other home kind of comes into play. That, you know, famous quote Mm -hmm. and and idea is that we're holding space to witness each other kind of unravel what it is that made us us and also program what it is we're going to be. And I've seen you consistently, you know, sit down with meditations or remind me to do different practices and to set ourselves up for um, not only our younger selves, but our future selves. And um, there's some different consistent uh, meditations I've been listening to recently where it's like wanting us to tap into the visual of, you know, what we want our future selves to have and experience and going even beyond receiving that and feeling like what that life feels like in it. So like the gratitude we have for having a space and a studio where we can spread out our equipment and like sit here and be present in the time. And I've been really trying to to integrate more of that. And as I say it, it's not like it's something that we are um, super, you know, efficient at right now, but I do think it's something to, worth sharing with others that, uh, the the understanding of quantum healing is is a wild thing. Um, I experienced it some with my grandma, and yeah, I could keep going into some portal stories here. Hmm. Quantum healing, I think I feel like um, you you were kind of mentioning that you sent love to your child self, like your younger self, and you, do you remember your younger as your younger self feeling that? You know, I'm starting to unravel that and I'm I'm trying to um, bring clarity because there's certain times that I I do feel like it was more angelic beings. I don't know that I knew or would have related it to my future self. It just felt like an energy. Um, But sometimes those energies felt different. So I think I'm still unraveling because like there's moments I feel like I was connecting with what some people would call the Archangel Michael energy. But then there are times that I feel like maybe it was... Um, my own energy coming back to be like, you're going to make it. It's going to be okay. So it's a, it's a combination of both. Maybe it's that I'm now in a, in a moment where I can meditate and send, you know, whatever loving energy is needed to go back to heal my inner child and so on and so forth. And maybe sometimes it's me. Maybe sometimes I don't want to deal with me either and I need some other like parental energy support mm-hmm. or familiar energy support. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I was just uh, thinking how crazy it, it is to me to think about things like time loops, you mm. know, um, because if you, if you in the now quantumly send energy or love or, or whatever back to your younger self during a, a hard time and you remember that as, as you are now, you're like, ah, oh, I remember that moment and I felt something and like, 
wow think about it now like that was me now it's like a time loop you know because that mm -hmm. that younger self is going to grow up and be the one who does that to that younger self and it's like it, it is kind of blows a time my loop. mind it's like that's a time loop right there well i think i think that's where i get a lot of my passion and drive from is people are like how do you keep going like especially if there's like a setback or something and i know my aunt has a hard time wrapping her head around like the big vision picture that I have and to a lot of people I'll go on these like vision explanations of like what I hope to do in my life and they just like can't wrap their heads around it or like that's just like a lot but I do feel like there's a future version of me that knows that all of that is possible and has like programmed and ingrained me with the spunk and the determination to, to keep going towards that you know like there's probably also a timeline where I'm homeless on the street with nothing. And, you know, I could easily tap into that timeline. I've been in a momentum towards that in different chapters of my life where I didn't, you know, tap into this timeline that knows that there's bigger, better, beautiful things to, to keep evolving and that all of our hopes and dreams to continue to inspire others and have space for others are possible. Mm hmm so I hope that time loop is the one that I can stay on where we just keep moving towards it. Yeah, I would say, I would say so, you know, because you're talking about it now, so right, it's going to make an impact on you. Yeah, and we, we've we chosen that too. I think there's a matter of choosing it, and that goes back to the, the idea too of like we perceive our reality and like what we're capable of and what we want to accomplish. I, I definitely often feel like our realities around us are a combination of our thoughts, our actions, um, and our belief systems, you know? And uh, I'm, we're all cons you know, constantly working on it. Um, but the whole uh, like quantum entanglement thing is, is wild because uh, I think, I, I'm not sure exactly what um, you all were talking about with the quantum entanglement, but I thought I heard it mention like something about memory being affected by the quantum entanglement. And uh, I don't know, stuff just th blows my mind. I think memories can be affected. And I think that's why it's important um, when there's like different forensic science and stuff involved too. And the people are trying to get different people's perspective of stories and stuff mm -hmm. straight. And there's mm -hmm. the he said, she said, they said perspective and the hearsay perspective mm -hmm. and how just things get like stretched and evolved. And like if you hear someone's version of a story six people later it's going to create a different form of a memory than what was actually created, but then it's going to, you know, segue a timeline of that for you. Yeah. Let's make it even more complicated and say that I feel like I've been like jumping timelines a little bit because there's been things that I'm like, I know for sure I did this thing and it's not, it's not that way here. And then people are like, you did this thing. And I'm like, I know for sure I didn't do that thing. In my timeline jumping, like imagine we're all just like jumping timelines and stuff and somebody remembered something from one timeline and then like added that to the telephone game, you know, and it's like, ooh. So there's, um, there's a version of this theory. Um, there's this guy on um, Mind Valley who I believe he passed away. He had like a long, um, well-lived life and before he passed away, he released a a course. Um, I was trying to find his name here. Was it Quantum Jumping? It is Quantum Jumping. Oh, man, why did the guy's name just completely leave me? Um, dang. Bert so, Goldman, that's his name. Um, he explained the, the concept of doppelgangers, and we tap into our doppelganger selves. And... Um, he was coming at it from a perspective of he wanted to learn new things and he believed that there was a version of him in different timelines in different realms that could say, you know, be an expert at piano or be an expert swimmer or be an expert jogger or writer or whatever. And he would try to pick up new habits and meditate and channel himself into the version of him that was already a um, professional at right. whatever. Right. Right. And he could channel that. But then as he did that, you know, different people had different perspectives of him because he was tapping into those versions of himself. Mm. Interesting. It's, it's almost like Sensei where you can like tap into that and then like 
drawn their their skills and stuff that's that's yeah. kind of wild to me um but like uh, this whole quantum thing is, is really insane and it's kind of funny to think about the school system uh, working how it does without any knowledge or um you know connection or there, we don't know nothing about quantum anything in like schools <sighs> the school all. system is made to program people into thinking they have to work nine to five jobs or you know reach some sort of test passing ability i it's, heard um somebody mentioned yesterday that maybe one of the the big bankers like jp morgan or something like did something to the school system or yeah they changed the school system because they wanted to program people to work it might have been the reagan whatever uh, it was like uh, was that like rockefeller something along those yeah. lines one of those big people in history yeah. uh, <laughs> that frustrate the fuck out of many of us they they programmed society into thinking we had to be a certain way so like you had to wake up you know go to school from 8 a.m to 4 p.m or whatever time you went to school if you missed so many days you got you know docked points just like so, in the work system like it's made to not create people who think for themselves yep sorry i wanted to finish that sentence okay go ahead no that's what i was gonna say <laughs> okay um but yeah, so they they did program us. Uh, you also heard one of our friends uh, sharing about Montessori schools. Were you there for that part? Kind of. I don't. I don't know where you're going with that though. How there's this new way. You you were saying how the school systems don't um, understand this like way of like reprogramming our minds and allowing our minds to explore you know different concepts and abilities. What are you pointing at? You said that. You started taking us down the portal of how you said you didn't understand how schools were working. Mm, yeah, I started it, and then you, you took over. Okay. Well, what I was going to go with with Montessori <laughs> schools is they um, they allowed the, the next generation or the new generation to explore how they experience things, which is what I was talking about with the, the subatomic particles and the way we perceive reality is through these different practices that they're um, – introducing to like Montessori students is they have hands-on activity and can work through problems and um, different things of their interests so that they can program themselves and pick a timeline that works better for them rather than having to be on this like standardized schedule and expectation. That's a better way than what I had to go through. Definitely wasn't made for me, that's for sure. Um, so hopefully our school system continue to evolve and find better ways to help everybody create a better world. Yeah, it would be really nice to be able to see the next generation um, understand how they can, you know, better themselves and uh, build their self-confidence and even work through their, their previous traumas. And uh, I think the, the quantum realms can, or the, the quantum realms, it's a silly kind of term because we, we live, we are experiencing the quantum realm. There's not this like extra place. I know we've given um, names to other uh, spaces and time, kind of like the Akashic records and things like that, where um, we allow ourselves to enter this state of mind. I think the Akashic records are kind of like a state of mind, um, really, where we meditate and we allow our soul to experience a different moment in time or series of memories or information. But in Star Trek, there was an episode where a planet had a form of energy around it. And it's like, they must have got that from our reality. <laughs> I mean, I, I do think that different shows like um, Star Trek and Loki and stuff, they, they build off of these concepts in like super maximalist like forms. <clears throat> if you want to get really technical, everything's an illusion anyway, you know? So the... The whole reality around us is within us. Yeah. I'm one of those people that questions everything um, in a lot of different ways until it, it shows itself to me. Um, I don't know if you have the patience for me to share a, a quick story that I shared with some of our friends yesterday about something that made me believe that the, the quantum healing and like theta energy um, had some potency to it. Do I have the floor for just a second? <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, 
a lot of times when I get in this rant, people ask me for like some sort of proof or they, they want to know the science behind it. And the best thing I can do is share from my personal experience. And one of the experiences I had um, is actually right when I first met Silo, my grandma was dying. And I've probably shared a version of the story on different podcasts, but um, I'll try to keep this one short and sweet. But my grandma had went into um, basically a coma and was unreachable. And my aunt was trying everything to, you know, get her to be conscious again. And she was having a really hard time. So I went to one of my friends who was really into theta healing and like quantum energy and like meditation and psychic stuff. And I was looking for, you know, some general signs that the stuff was, you know, more than just some sort of placebo in my mind and that it was just there to make me feel better to make up something. So during the connection with her, she had me sit down with her and I had a purple amethyst in my hand and I meditated and she walked me through what she would call a quantum healing or a theta healing and visualized us taking this purple amethyst or this purple light and meeting my grandmother in the spiritual realms where she may have been during her coma, something out of this body. And we walked her energy up what we visualized as stairs to like a golden light kind of door, like a heavenly gate kind of door. Um, I wasn't sure at the time <clears throat> if my grandma wanted to keep fighting to live or if she was um, ready to, you know, transition. And I was really sad and scared. But in this moment, we, you know, asked her spirit to give us a sign and show us that. And um, through the meditation, she kind of just chose that she wanted to still be present with us. And I remember my aunt calling me and being like, what did you do? Your your grandmother just woke up. She said that she saw you with a purple light and that she is grateful she's still here. So there was like a, a experience of that. Um, there's some more details to it, but I don't want to take up too much time. But the basic of that is that she was able to feel that experience. And that was something that really sticks with me and, and gives me some sort of um, belief and proof around that, you know, through time and space, we can reach others and work with others and help heal each other. And um, that's, I think, how we build these stories and perspectives up of each other. And sometimes we lose sight of that. And it's um, hard to reprogram ourselves and to allow space for people to change but it's really important i think to the evolution and i do kind of wish that those were the things that um more people were taught how to hold space and to, to focus on their reality so that their creativity could flourish and they could you know create systems around evolution and caring for one another rather than the destruction and chaos we have happening in the world right now indeed that is a, a very powerful story about your Grammy, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I wish that you know, people, and I, I think it's it is happening. Uh, schools are starting to learn more about meditation and all the stuff. So, who knows what's gonna happen as we get older? But, um, I'm grateful to be here. I am too, and I I think why it was important for us to you know, dive into this conversation today was I wanted to hold space for others to make a um, opinion of their own. And if they wanted to research it, um, there are a lot of meditations and practices. And I feel like we even have some, you probably have some on your insight timer. For what? Um, practices where you walk people into visualizing the life that they want or the creative practice they want or the 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 dream spaces they want you have so many most of mine are visualization meditations yeah. i do cover quite a lot of creativity and um, abundance and visualizing your your dream life and your dream clients and all these different things and like i think it's important for creatives I think you have that one don't you i do have one but i think you do too we i have don't have a dream them. client one okay i you have do. a dream client one yeah um but visualizing the people you want to work with the projects you want to create, the support you want to call in, the book you want to write, how many books you want to sell or the people you want to meet and all those things. And like mm -hmm. take time to um, heal anything that you may be holding you back. Maybe somebody told you you weren't good at something and it really stopped you. Like visualize yourself going back and, you know, responding to that differently, integrating it differently. Joe Dispenza also talks a lot about the quantum and healing and uh, creating a life that feels good to you. Hmm. He's one of my mentors. Um, 
not personally, obviously, but, you know, I just uh, kind of like look up to some of his work and what he's done and his meditations and how he helps people to heal and uh, connects a lot with, you know, the quantum. He's also a more spiritual science type of person where he connects the two a lot. He does a lot of um, experiments and studies, uh, which are really powerful. Um, so highly suggest him. And the quantum is quite a fascinating topic. So being able to to share information about the quantum along with healing and um, all that is very powerful. So please check out uh, Shannon Shine. Check out Silamon if you haven't heard of Joe Dispenza, Dr. Joe Dispenza. Highly suggest you check him out as well. Yeah. Um, I feel like there's a bunch of people like Joris Cannon and um, what was the guy? I just remembered his name. Bert Goldman, I think. Was Bert name. Goldman. And um, different people like that have Louis Hay, I think, talked about it. Yeah. Um, Louis Hay is great. Even Lisa Nichols talks about it sometimes where she's like visualizing herself as like the most powerful speaker that she can be and things mm -hmm. like that. So it's becoming more, I think, accessible to our minds. I think that's one way you can kind of see how humanity has kind of evolved a little bit is uh, we're all able, a lot of us are able to start thinking about this kind of stuff, mm -hmm. quantum mechanics and physics and um, like the Bernstein effect, you know, all of us are starting to kind of awaken to the butterfly to that, effect and the, the butterfly effect. And stuff. Um, you know, it's becoming more of a widely accepted phenomenon mm -hmm. rather than just, oh, you're crazy. Yeah. And we just like hear about it. I mean, the government released those records of us mm -hmm. being like a hologram and a dream and like astral traveling and like all those things being possible. Um, I feel like they're trying to like, leak the information but there's so many people not too much. Yeah. yeah not too much but there's so many people that are just like oh you know like that's still a conspiracy theory even though they're like putting things out in front of us and like there's not enough people interested just yet but it's it's building it's happening it's slowly, happening slowly but surely um so share this with a friend or uh anybody you think would um you know be open to it yeah but again we're not scientists we're just figuring it out as we go i'm a scientist i am <laughs> totally a scientist i do experiments all the time we did just finish watching young sheldon so now we are you know channeling that energy <laughs> 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 that was this that was a sad show i loved it though um good. but yeah good stuff all right um until next time stay awake shine on always